I'm very worried about what we did to people. No, indeed. I think what what the study is showing today is probably just bringing home to what we kind of suspected through the pandemic and probably through part of the, the lockdown myself. I'm probably one of those ones who did increase the, their alcohol intake. Overall, when you look across the, the kind of the spectrum, we have seen moderate drinkers actually reduce their, their intake because obviously they probably the people who drink when the bars and the pubs and the restaurants are open, they were obviously closed. But I think we... We developed what a new social norm, I think, through the pandemic. People were drinking at home because of the kind of increasing costs in pubs over the last 10 or 15 years before the pandemic. But this seems to be a new normal. And this is probably down to do with the boredom during the pandemic, the stress and anxiety of all the fear that's been pushed out through the pandemic. So this becoming a new norm, you're right to say that we saw the rise in kind of people drinking at home over the pandemic. And that's not come down yet, David. No, I, we spoke about this yesterday, and the fact is it's not just about alcohol. People, I think, gave up. They start, obviously didn't have to dress up, didn't have to go to work. We saw the, the dramatic decline in exercise as well. And there's a very real cost to this, isn't there, in terms of people drinking more. We know it's habitual. You get into these habits, and it's very difficult to kick them. And, of course, then the risk is you have medical illnesses and you end up in hospital. You no, know, indeed. And, and if you look, actually, at the ONS figures, I used to lead the team there producing these. We, we did see a spike, actually, in 2020 in the number of alcohol-related deaths. They mainly caused by kind of liver problems there. They were around 9,000 across the whole of the UK. So, so the study today talking about, you know, in the worst-case scenario, up to 25,000 extra deaths, that's about 1,250 a year. They kind of, that was their worst-case scenario where they were kind of predicting that people who drink a lot they will go and drink even more when now the pubs are open. I'm not quite sure that's the case, but but even in their main scenario, they were talking about 350 extra deaths per year. The deaths, uh, David, they're predominantly among males. And the, the, obviously there's a lot of calls to address this with different policy. Now in Scotland and Wales, where I live, they've got this minimum unit pricing of alcohol. But a study actually a few months back in Scotland, David, actually showed that among those who drink the most, so obviously we're talking about those people here now, they were actually, because the minimum unit pricing came in, they were foregoing things like food rather than the alcohol because of the addiction. So, you know, the consequences of the policy in Scotland hasn't really addressed the problem there. So if they are going to try and address this problem, we've got to try and avoid, say, in England, going down the same road as the kind of the devolved countries of Scotland and Wales. Mm. I've never really understood this. Of course, all it does is price people out of pubs. They go to supermarkets and buy cheap booze, and it's much easier to drink far more at home than it is in a pub where other people are around. And the thing is, when you're drinking at home, you, you, it's so easy just to go back to the kitchen and get another one. Mm. The measures that you're pouring, if you're drinking spirits, are much, much larger. So, and it obviously is cheaper in the round when you start looking at it at home. So that's where we're seeing this kind of spike. And, and it'll be interesting to see if this just continues because, you know, more and more people are probably not returning to pubs because of these new norms. You were only allowed to gather with people in your gardens at certain points and maybe house parties and gardens are becoming more of the norm. So this is a new, you know, it's a trend that happened through the pandemic. But I'm looking at the data and this could be a step change that is the new norm because of the lockdowns in the pandemic rather than a temporary thing. And this will cause obviously damage for the rest of the society in the longer term. And, and do you think we will break it? Just looking at these figures, of course, we saw that actually drinking levels did fall, but they've actually reversed and people are starting to drink again. Is this just because it's habitual? You get into the, the mindset. As you say, it's really easy to have very big measures at home. No, indeed. And obviously what you, you're finding as well is that, you know, people start having a drink on a Monday because they were a stressful day, perhaps. Then it just spirals. Before, it probably yeah. thought, oh, we'll have a little party on the weekend and you drink them. <laughs> and now it's Monday, then Tuesday, then Wednesday. And, you know, the, the government's advising 14 units a week, which is not a lot, really, when you look at in terms of the units of alcohol. You can easily pass that in, yeah. you know, in one evening with a couple of glasses of wine when, you, when you're pushing things down. So I think, you know, things might, you know, bringing the awareness of all of this is important. Yeah. But I just think it's going to be very difficult to see a reversal of this quite quickly unless... You know, there's an education campaign rather than a government saying you have to do X, Y, and Z. I think people respond better to understanding the consequences than Indeed. policies that force them into doing things that they shouldn't need. Jamie, to. I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for joining me here on Talk TV. We